peace of the Lord Jesus. Those that are also connected with us, we also wish a peace of the Lord Jesus. I invite the church to stand up at this moment in reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord. We're going to open our Bibles and the gospel according to Luke, Luke number 8. Luke 8, 24. As we were praying for the service tonight, God has shown a woman that was at home in her heart. She, um, she felt like she didn't want to come to the service. But the Lord has brought her to this place tonight. And the Lord, even against her will, you will come to this place and the Lord has a purpose tonight to bless you. The Lord has a purpose to renew your life because the moment in which we are is a very serious moment. The Bible says the following. And they came to him and I awoke him say, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the, the wind and regained rigging of the water and they ceased and, the, and there was calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid. Lord, we want to please so that word may bring life to our hearts, bring renewal and remove from us any lack of faith, everything that prevents us from entering to our eternity. We plead to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, the disciples were learning the Lord Jesus. They were getting to know the Lord Jesus. There were several um, amazing signs and wonders the Lord Je Jesus has had operated. They already seen what Jesus was capable of. They have seen the power of the Lord through Jesus Christ. And uh, through what Jesus had done, there was no doubt that Jesus was not a man like any other man that they had seen. He was not a, a pastor or a religious. No, he was different from anything that he had known up until this point. But God as they were walking with the Lord, it was necessary that their faith may be tested because Jesus knew that later on they would be the ones that were going to be used in order to carry the word of the Lord and to relay the same message with, with the same operation of wonders that Jesus had operated. Jesus was tired and they entered into a boat and the centurion had sought Jesus Jesus had performed a miracle in the life of the centurion and we will see in the sequence here the widow of Naim was going back to uh, bury her child and Jesus raised her child and they so they were present in all of those situations and now Jesus was tired because whatever he was going he was doing the will of the Lord and doing the will of the Lord is not easy pray fast and sometimes helping people at any time it's not easy but that's what we have been called for and we have been called for a time because we know that in the Lord we will rest one day in eternity we get tired here our body get tired but our soul rests every day in the presence of the Lord so now Jesus got tired his body was tired so then he rests he sleeps and the storm rises up and the storm, we go through storms. Maybe we didn't go through a storm like we have seen down there. I, never, I didn't see any tree falling. Maybe you guys have more faith, right? <laughs> These trees were, were remained standing. The houses down there, the rain blew, the wind blew to test the faith of many people, right? But the problem is that you, when you are 
uh, under this wind in the dark and you don't know where the wind is coming from when, because when you s see light you can see but when it gets darker when you don't see light outside or inside and the wind is blowing blowing the disciples were in the same situation there was not probably any light if there was any light was a minimal light and the blow the wind was blowing and the the sea was disturbed and there was a fear in their hearts that were going to sink and die right their concern is not that they were going to sink because but because if they sank they would die nobody wants to die everybody wants to see god right everybody wants to see god but no one wants to die i say there in hallandale that i 50 years old and Ronil is younger than I. I just turned 50. I was you know, closer to dying than, than before. I'm, do you think I'm going to live f more 50 years? I don't think so. Maybe Jesus will come earlier. I, mean, I always tell my brethren there in Hollandale that we have to pay attention to the prophecy. One of the greatest prophecies of the church is in the word of the Lord was the fig tree that was going to blossom and the tree sprouted and is here once the fig tree sprouted there was how many generations were going to pass it is this generation this is not another generation so the fig tree has has sprouted and the years are passing the youth are getting married and getting engaged in a haste to get married because they know that they don't have much time and the church rests in the Lord because it knows that the more we are closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus they are going to our rest and the disciples they were afflicted they were desperate in that boat and maybe this woman that didn't want to come to the house of the Lord tonight he may be in this situation she may be desperate because the moment in which we are living is a moment of in which many people they don't have hope they look ahead and they see the uh, finished difficulties the infirmities the tries that come and the hope it lacks in the heart of men because this is the weapon the enemy has used to steal the experience of salvation of the chosen of the lord the word says if the days were not um, shortened would you be able to uh, will the Lord be able to find faith on earth but if we don't have faith whoever doesn't have faith will not see God and the enemy has tried to steal the faith from the heart of man but the Lord brings us to his presence in order to tell us that he desires to fill our hearts with the faith and the assurance that our days may end but we will remain living in the presence of the Lord forevermore because salvation is given to us in Jesus and in Jesus we have been able to reach this experience the Lord also spoke of another woman she was walking and she was walking uh, beside a, a man but as she was uh, the, the path was progressing she was being left behind and that man that was walking kept walking ahead but the Lord left there on this path the footprints and he told this woman in order to move forward and to make an effort not to allow that her faith be stolen and the experience of salvation that the Lord has given her you have not been able to reach the salvation from the pastor from the church or from the praises no you the salvation who gave you was the Lord Jesus that one day died on the cross of Calvary and he he never fails he's faithful is truthful he remains with you in every instant I may fail we may fail whoever brought you to the church maybe even invited you may fail because we are flawed because Jesus is perfect and who is per the home is perfect has an invitation for you every day has an invitation so that you don't forsake this experience of salvation and you perceive you because the end of this journey is wonderful is great we can see all the wonderful things that are ahead of our eyes but the word of the Lord says nothing nothing that their eyes have seen nothing 
We cannot imagine what the Lord has prepared for you in eternity. In this eternity is what the Lord has for us. The Lord awakes and Jesus does what He always does. He calmed down the storm. He calmed down the wind. He calmed down the water. And the disciples are surprised. And they ask a question, Who is this who even the winds obey? Who is this? This is the Jesus to whom we have known in, in our infirmity when we go to His feet and we know that He has the answer to our lives. When we plead, we know that in Him we find the comfort and the rest that we need. Our rest is not out there. Our rest is in the presence of the Lord. And in our own bedrooms and inside of our homes, we know that He hears our prayers and He answers according to our need. But it is interesting that Jesus asks a question to the disciples. Do you, have you noticed? Jesus asks a question to the disciples, which is the following. Where is your faith? And this is the question the Holy Spirit is asking to each one of us. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Where is your faith has brought you and where it will lead you to? To many, their faith only carries them to only to the moment in which when they receive the answer to a diagnosis that says there is no solution to your problem. And then he abandons everything. Ah, oh, no. I served the Lord up until now. And now the Lord, the Lord Jesus is asking you this question to each one of us. Um, this week, a uh, uh, young woman from Hollandale, she was having a, a hard time getting pregnant. She had even given up and then pregnancy came. She was very happy and she uh, traveled to Georgia because of the hurricane and she called saying, Pastor, I began ble to bleed and uh, the doctor said that I lost the child. My sister, I'm going to tell you one thing. The Lord is the owner of all things. If there is a purpose of the Lord to give you a child, persevere in your commitment with the Lord and salvation to which the Lord has called and He will give you at His own time. If there is no purpose of the Lord in, in, in your life, I'm going to tell you, He has already given you the greatest gift that could have been able to reach, which is salvation. Our children are here. We are here struggling with them every day so that they may understand eternity, so that they remain in the presence of the Lord. And this, some, sometimes people don't understand the responsibility with what is, which is to have a child. You raise while, you, while they are inside of a house, and it's one thing. When they turn 18, when they are 16 already, they start try to challenge you. Every 16-year-old child thinks that they know better than their parents. 15, 16, they are, they are so smart. So when they turn 20, then they begin to understand that they are not so smart. 21, their wisdom goes down, and 22, and when they are turn 23, they realize that they were not so intelligent. We go through this, isn't it true? Each one of us go through this. With you, it's not going to be different. So then, that's why we never get scared. So our trial, as parents here, in the moment of difficulty, our children, they know that our faith is not going to carry us uh, out, uh, to the point of the trial, but it will carry us m way beyond. It will carry us to return to the arms of the Lord Jesus. We know that the commitment that we um, made with the Lord is not for time, it's for an eternity. And we will enjoy the presence of the Lord Jesus. The Lord asked those men, where is your faith? And this is the question the Lord is wants to ask to each one of us where to watch point your faith will carry you the lord has faith to place in your heart this that will be sufficient so that your faith may carry you to eternity when i say your faith is the faith that the lord has placed in your heart is a faith that is not ours it does not belong to you but it came from god but the, and this faith and fills our hearts and we go through trials we go through infirmity we go through difficulties, but we know of one thing, because that our, the end of our days is going to be 
in the presence of the Lord. We have been speaking here in Sunday schools uh, about the seven letters, isn't it? We're speaking about Ephesus, Smyrna, and it's interesting that um, uh, all of the seven letters, we are living the, set, the last period of the church, which, which refers to the letter of Laodicea, isn't it? It is interesting that all the other six letters, the previous letters, the Lord had a compliment to give to each one of those church that were prophetic. The Laodicea has nothing good about it. Jesus doesn't say anything good about this church of Laodicea. Those are, this church is our, it's us. When you see the church of our days, uh, gospel, commitment with everything that is out there, a man turned to himself. I was speaking with the pastor earlier. The word says that at the end of the days, the love of many will grow colder. Is man forsaking his, abandoning his children, the wife abandoning the child, the children, the husband abandoning the wife. People are growing colder, right? But the church is under under the heat of the Holy Spirit. We, and we are not subject to those things. We cannot now be convinced by the world, but we have to fight with the weapons the Spirit has placed at our disposal. Our, is our marriage going bad? We go to God's feet. Our children are away from the Lord. We plead to the Lord in, in their favor. Our trials are uh, overcome in the presence of the Lord. And we cannot take the shape of these times. Well, the times have changed. They have changed and they are going to change even more because they are, go they are going from bad to worse. If, if now is bad, it's going to get even worse. But the church, the faithful church, will remain at the God's feet, pleading, asking the Lord to help the mercy so that the faith may remain. So when Jesus comes, Jesus will come back to take his the church with the faith that the Lord poured out upon his church and before it it ceases he will come and those are in sanctification he will meet with the Lord in the clouds the youth uh, say today it's very hard to sanctify in our days you know, hey, in our times it's the same thing sin is a sin at any time the one is committing commitment with the Lord is commitment with the Lord Truth is truth in any time. It was in the church of Ephesus, in the church now of Laodicea. The difference now, my brethren, is that that church was going to the fires and thrown to the lions. Their flesh was being attacked. It was being massacred. And today we enter here. We have uh, human rights. We can praise the Lord. We can sing songs to the Lord. Nobody's being prosecuted. But the enemy has. Uh, attacked us with a weapon much more powerful because now he does not attack our, your body he, ta he attacks your mind man's mind and the hidden the, the enemy steals uh, the salvation man but the church try, uh, fights because when Jesus asks to us where is your faith we will tell Lord I have kept the faith that I received from you uh, to, the end, to the last minute we're going to present in, to, in the front of the white throne to receive the promises that have been described in the word of the Lord. Let us pr praise the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. I invite the church to stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the name of our God. Lord, we're going to praise you because you're powerful, Lord, to do much more than we can imagine, Lord. We praise the Lord because your people has lived by faith, Lord. You are powerful to act amongst us, Lord, like you acted in Brazil, everywhere in the world. You are God from afar and from close, Lord. You do want to search our hearts, Lord. We raise you, Lord, high up, because you have taken care of your church around the world in those last moments so difficult, Lord. We glorify, we exalt you. You exalt your great name in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we uh, exalt you, Lord, and praise you because we can be in your house, because the door you have opened in this place, Lord, where we can praise your holy name. We praise you, Lord, for everything that you have done amongst your people, for your victories throughout this week that just passed. We saw your hand operating in favor of your people. We exalt you and praise your holy name in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, our eternal Father, and sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit be upon us, upon your whole church, now and forever. Amen. Uh, peace of the Lord to everyone. We are at disposal to pray for each one. Pastor Ronido has a message. My brother, the peace of the Lord. According to um, instruction of the Lord, tomorrow at 1030, we're going to have a special service with uh, Holy Supper. We're going to have glorification to the Lord for the blessing received, for the deliverances that He has given us uh, uh, as the hurricane passed. So we'd like to um, invite the ones that are not here so that everybody may participate, right? Um, informing the groups, the group, the assist, groups of assistant, and um, inform everybody that participate here with us. And if you need a prayer, we are here at their disposal to pray for you. And I wish the peace of the Lord to everyone. Thank <laughs> you.